Now let's get on to the good stuff. Well, I had to do two parts on that video. It ran a little too long. So uh, here's part two of the anarchist chest. See down here in the bottom, that's where all my hand planes are at, my joinery planes. So let's get started. Right here is another set of socket chisels, and this is of the new Stanleys. This is some refurbished ones that I got from old Bob Gary up north. Socket chisel handles, these are Stanley, an assortment of different brands. I believe I got some Buck Brothers in here, some Greenlee, but they're all sharpened up and ready to go. Here in the end, to work my way over. This is my Lee Nelson bevel up jack plane. Very similar to my Veritas uh, bevel up jointer plane you've been seeing me use on the past few videos. This is my Stanley number no. 7 jointer plane. This also came from Bob. This has been refurbished and ready to be used. Got a little bit of rust right there on the side, and I was just talking about how great my rust preventative was. I guess I need to go back and take a second look at this one and maybe put a little extra oil on it. All right, here's a wooden hand plane, and this is a smoother. And you can see it's got a pretty steep bevel on here. This is at 55 degrees, which is for some hand planing for figured woods that's going to tear out on you under normal conditions. But this is a smoothing plane. It's made out of white oak. And uh, this is made by Scott Meek over in Asheville, North Carolina, about an hour from here. He hand makes all these wooden hand planes here. Here is one of my go-to planes. This is your classic jack plane. Stanley number five jack plane right here. It's also got the cure, uh, corrugated sole on it, which usually means it's pre World War II, which was what well, a lot of people believe the best time that Stanley made their hand planes was the pre war era. Right here in the back, I have a pretty large wooden plow plane. It pretty much just makes grooves in wood. And this one's also been refurbished. I got this one from Bob about two years ago. And uh, got a router plane right here. This is the first cordless router that was ever invented, as Paul Seller says. This is the Lee Nelson model, based off the Stanley. It's also got a real nice, real nice depth stop system on it there, and a real nice fence here on the side. Uh, a very nice tool to use. I also have a Stanley one that's been refurbished as well. Here's the Veritas uh, moving filister plane. It's got a fence on it, a depth stop. It's also got a small nicker when you're going against the grain or cutting across the grain rather to uh, slice the wood so it doesn't tear out on you. A really nice hand plane to use right here. Moving filister plane. That's also based off the old Stanley. This other side I have my Lee Nelson jointer plane right here, number seven. Right here is a wooden jack plane made, of, made out of a white oak. And it's bedded at 50 degrees, which is up steeper than your normal jack planes are beveled at. But this was also made by Scott Meek over in Asheville. And here we have a really nice Lee Nelson smoothing plane. Back here in the back, with these teals, mallets catching on it. All right, back here in the back is another small area, and that's where I got some more joinery planes at. Back is another little small teal on the bottom of the chest. I got some more joinery planes in there. There's another wooden plow plane. I kind of have a thing for wooden plow planes. I got several in the shop I need to restore. Right beside it is a, a modern day plow plane made by Veritas. This is a really nice plow plane, really light, cuts really well. Right here is kind of like a Stanley combination plane made out of metal. It also comes with a box full of cutters. This is a very, very old Stanley right here. Under the Stanley numbering system, this is the Stanley 45, and it takes, it's pretty much a, a very large plow plane, but it's very versatile. You can do tongue and groove with it, or any kind of moldings and such, if you want to put enough cutters in there and go back and forth. And this box right here contains all the original cutters. 
seen me use this one a few times on past videos. This is my Lee Nelson number 48 tundra groove plane works fantastic for making tundra groove and to finish up here I have some small molding planes right here that are uh, stacked up horizontally and uh, originally this whole entire till back here is made for molding planes just to go the whole width I don't use a whole lot of molding planes and I'll never probably have that mean to fill up that whole row back there Let's give you an idea as we go around the shop. I've got a lot of hand planes in here, not just the ones that are in the teal. The ones in there are my go-to planes that I use the most. And over here is another uh, plow plane that needs to be restored. Just kind of sitting over here on the shelf. I've got some older block planes right there. Uh, this is a uh, Tundra Groove wooden hand plane right here for Tundra Groove. Over here is some more of my go-to planes. And uh, these wooden planes, you ain't got to worry about rust so much, so you can leave them out. And these are both your, uh, called the German kind of horn planes. So a lot of people refer to them as, and it's pretty much made into a scrub plane. You can see up here, I got another plow plane, another jack plane, some old, uh, an old wooden jointer plane, and uh, some more wooden jointer planes on the top. Over on this shelf, I got my Stanley router plane. That thing's ready to use. I just I like the Lee Nelson better. Another plow plane and another moving philister plane. Now, I've never used this one. I bought it at a flea market for $10. And I'm not sure if it was ever used. To be honest with you, everything's in brand new condition. And back here on my uh, cabinet bench here, I got a lot of hand tools that I go to a lot. My Japanese saws. And this is all my uh, panel saws, my rip saws, my cross cut saws. I got some Lee Nelson joinery saws right there for a workbench stuff. This right here is for stock preparation. Most of them are made by Disson, or Diston rather, not Disson, but Diston. Those come from Bob. I got a pretty neat axe right here that I got for my birthday from my wife a while back. This right here is made by Liam Hoffman over in North Carolina. He's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half away from here. I think he's about 19 or 20 years old. He's a blacksmith. Of course, it's pretty obvious he's a blacksmith if I'm buying an axe off of him. But, uh, another nice little tomahawk hatchet right here made by Justin Burke. He's also pretty local. He's a blacksmith down in, I think, Sneedville, Tennessee is where he's at. That's a really nice one right there. I'm not even used this one yet. 